and abundance in all homes and hearts. Divine mind shows me the way I take action to manifest my dreams. I invite the universe to surprise me with possibilities. Inspired by spirit, I am free to be creative. I make the best use of my time and resources. And from Psalms, let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to the faithful, and to those who turn to him in their hearts. And so it is, and so we let it be. to join us in singing House Built on Love. Yeah, 
opportunity to greet one another. It's like Eddie with an L, and I was at the Posse Fest last weekend. I heard you had a pretty good, wonderful time here. Wasn't it great? Wow. When I spoke with Stowe and Karen Taylor Good, they told me that our team is the sharpest of anywhere, and our congregation the most responsive, and I said, I knew that. So thank you for welcoming them. Just absolutely great. We are so glad to be able to welcome such wonderful talent as all of you and those who serve in our music ministry and our guest musicians as well. As we begin this morning, I'm asking our light bringers to come forward and turn and share their beautiful smiles with our congregants. If this is your very first visit to Unity Church of Clearwater, we've been looking out the window and waiting for you, and we just knew you'd come. Please give our light bringers a little wave. They'll bring you a welcome bag. First time guests. All right, there we go. Lots of folks. Wonderful. That is wonderful. We trust you'll always remember your first visit to our church and that you'll claim it as your spiritual home as well. We have refreshments in the cafe after the service. We love to meet you and greet you there. As we begin this morning, we want you to know that we never want you to turn around if you find you're a little bit late getting to services. Just come on in. We're on unity time here. We love to see you. As we begin, we like to speak our opening statements, the sets of high consciousness for us. They're here on the screen. Let's speak the word. There is only one presence and one power, everywhere and always. God, the good, omnipotent, and God is love. And let's speak this word aloud together. In our unity of purpose, we are guided by infinite wisdom, renewed by abundant life, and prospered by divine love. 
We give thanks that here at Unity we are not at odds with the scientific theory of evolution. We understand evolution as our ability to respond to changes in the world around us in creative and open ways that prove to make our lives better and bless our world. So we are continuously evolving. In that light, don't ever be surprised if the order of service changes, sometimes right in the middle. We are evolving. But this morning, we ask you to close your eyes with us just for a moment and give thanks together for life, for love. We've been told of a beautiful kitty cat named Max who made his transition to a new dimension. Max is scampering off in some beautiful way. We think of all those who make transition into a new dimension as beginning a new adventure, a beautiful new adventure. We think of Melanie Gray and of Billy Dale Medlin, father of Robin Hicks. Billy Dale is beginning a new expression, pass peacefully in the company of his loved ones. We set you free. In the peace of this moment, we bless all who are candidates, regardless of the political party. We thank you for being willing to serve our nation. We bless you on your way. Let all the leaders of the earth be led by wisdom and peace as we grow and evolve together. And so it is. And so we let it be. Amen. And now let's speak aloud together in our unity way, our Lord's Prayer, together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The and ever is okay. We let that go. As we continue this morning, we love our opportunity to pray together. Prayer is the heart of this ministry, and as we sing our way into meditation, we welcome those who are arriving now. You're in perfect timing. Let's sing our way into prayer.
to be the voice of peace, of love, of patience, of reason. I behold this earth as an evolving expression of love where there has been anger, resistance, fear. Let love now come forth and heal. Where confusion has reigned, expressions of violence and war, we see souls reaching up for higher understanding. From this point of light that is our consciousness, from this place, from this word, now emanate cycles and circles of love, 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 healing and uplifting humankind, clearing our way that we see we are growing together. No enemies, no fear here, but the healing flow of love that lifts us to a higher realization and we become more ourselves, more of God's plan in expression. Humankind is not devolving, it is evolving as we learn and grow together and grow up and rise in love. So let it be, and so it is. Amen. Welcome, Dieter Randolph, our Minister of Education. Come on. Well, good morning. good morning. My name is Dieter, and this is where I'm supposed to be. As it turns out, that's where you're supposed to be, so, so far off to a good start. As you know, we like to begin our services by consulting our primary textbook, the Bible. 
I will read the passages as they appear on the screen, and I invite you to share in the response together. Let's go. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became an adult, I put aside childish things. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully as I am fully known. Together, I am a child of God, becoming more loving as I grow up. And let's hold that truth in the silence. Love is patient, kind, not jealous, not pompous, not rude, not quick-tempered. It does not brood, rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So faith, hope, love remain. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Together. As I grow up spiritually, I express greater love, less self-centered, and more spirit-centered. And in the silence. God is love. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. If we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. Together, I learn to love more perfectly as I resolve to evolve, and in the silence. Whoever loves remains in the light. And there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Together. Thank God for evolution. I am not falling in love. I am rising in love. And so it is. Let's continue our celebration as we listen to our special music. Good morning. Spiritual path can be 
lives on to evolve. Give your brain a metaphysical way you can resolve to evolve. Leave your mental baggage behind. It may sound strange, but the world won't change till you rearrange your mind. Just don't know why you keep spinning So, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty smart guy. You know that. I know that. I don't know why you're laughing. I, I know that because I find that I have to tell people all the time, and that's a good sign, right? So don't worry about it. It's all right. Because I also know. Because what smart people do is they research things that most people already know how to do. I do a lot of that. I was asked to do a talk about love today, and so I spent a lot of time reading about it, thinking about it, looking it up. Reading about and thinking about and looking up something that everyone else knows how to do automatically, even Forrest Gump knows what love is. <laughs> it is the kind of thing that everybody already knows about. And I got to a place in my study and preparation and time preparing for this talk, and I realized that there was no more reading that I could possibly do or needed to possibly do, because love is something that you already know about. When you ask a lot of people what love is, it is true that you'll get a lot of different kinds of answers. Different people think of different things. Different people point to different things. You see the couple walking hand in hand in the park, or you think of fuzzy puppies or something, or whatever it is. Everybody has an idea about love, and isn't that interesting, by the way, that everyone has an idea of it. It's already something that's true about you. And so it turns out that no matter what your definition is of love, you're already right. Because the thing about love it is it is this ultimate, bigger, wonderful, more beautiful thing that is true about each and every one of us. It is the thing behind everything that we see. And so everything that we see is a version of it. Every definition is a version of it, is an abstraction of this one big, beautiful idea. It turns out Bob Marley was right. There's just one love. There's just one. And it's something that we experience differently perhaps, but it's still one thing that joins and binds and pulls and unites every single person. When people talk about love, they use gravitational terms sometimes. You know what I mean? They say love makes the world go round. People talk about falling in love because when you are falling in love, you know that feeling. It feels gravitational in nature. And maybe there's something to that. We read that uh, gravity, bless you, is the property of mass. That every single thing that there is in the universe has gravity as part of it. It's part of the deal. You can't get away from it. It's just the thing. 
Every physical thing has gravity as part of it. Just as gravity is a property of mass, love is a property of life. And each and every person, no matter where you are or what you've been through or what you're up to, love is the truth about you. No matter how you might feel about yourself right now, we're working on it. Love is the truth about you. Love is that power that joins and binds in divine harmony, the universe and everything in it, the thing that makes you you, the thing that makes you happy, the thing that draws you together, and the thing that will bring your miracle to you is love. Love feels like gravity because it's that same kind of pull. But are you ready for the next level, the black belt level stuff? Think about this with me. There is only one presence and one power. You know that? We talk about it all the time. Everything that we experience in the outer is an approximation of something that is even more true in the ultimate, in the inner. You know that already. We talk about it all the time. So here's where I'm going with all of this. It's not that love is like gravity, but rather it is one and the same power. If I hold a pencil and I drop it to the ground, that thing that happens is just a crude approximation of something that's going on inside of you. It is one and the same power. Everything that happens, the thing that prevents you and I from spinning off into cold, dark space isn't really gravity, it's love. The thing that holds your body together isn't really gravity, it's love. The thing that's happening, no matter what else is happening, is love. Let's be the kind of people that can look around and see love happening. Let's be the kind of people that can look past the outer and see something deeper happening. That's the secret. People come to me sometimes and they say, well, you know, I know all of the secret words. I know all of the magic things. I've read every single book. I've been to every single workshop and every seminar. I've got all of the right stickers on my car. I got the dream catcher on the rear view mirror. By the way, that scares me. Please don't fall asleep at the wheel. I got the whole thing going on. I know all of the words, and yet I don't feel any closer to that, that feeling that I want. I know all of the magic words, and yet I can't seem to experience that breakthrough, that demonstration, that miracle, that thing that I yearn for. I can't seem to make it happen. What's the password? As if God lived in a treehouse. For some people, he does. But that's why you're here, right? I'm here to tell you that there's no special words. There's no secret technique. There's no knock. Prayer does not start with what you say. Prayer starts with what you see. This whole thing, this whole spirituality thing, this whole unity person thing, this whole life thing is a matter of taking something inside of you and bringing it out so it doesn't start with what you say. Instead, if you want to be good at this, if you want to have demonstrations that make sense, if you want to have a life that makes sense, start with what you see. Become the kind of person who thinks about truth and love and beauty so much. Become the kind of person who finds something, doesn't matter what, to begin with, find something inside of them that's so exciting and so dynamic and so beautiful and so true and so love with a capital L that you can't shut up about it. That's when the word we speak has power when it comes from somewhere inside of us. And that's what love does. Everybody knows what it feels like when you love and you can't help yourself. That's that love gravity. That's that magnet. And that is the secret to every demonstration. Find something in you you can't shut up about that irritates your friends when you can't quit talking about. That's all right. They'll get there. What we need is that magic moment when something inside has to come out. Sometimes when people come to Unity, we hand them a book. And that's great. we got beautiful books, beautiful ideas. But nothing happens with those ideas unless we do something about it. We are told to seek first the kingdom. That's awesome. And it's righteousness. Righteousness has nothing to do with some kind of moral right or wrong. That's not the thing. Seek first the kingdom. Seek those ideas. Seek that feeling. Seek that truth and beauty. And then seek the righteousness, the right use in other words, find a good idea and then do something about it. That's where the revolution starts. That's where the miracle starts. That's where we fall in love. Do something about it. It's not enough to just think these pretty thoughts. They are pretty. Be the beauty in your life. You got to be one with it. No matter what their definition is, 
when people talk about love, they talk in terms of oneness, don't they? When I express a feeling of love for anything, a person, a situation, a hoagie, I express some different vocabulary, perhaps, but the basic idea is oneness. When you like an outfit, you say, that's really you. When you love somebody, one of the things that you're experiencing is a connection, some kind of a common ground. No matter how you talk about love, when you talk about love, you are talking about oneness. You and I, or me and this activity, this artwork, this song, this whatever it is, we've got something in common. And when I experience that whatever it is, I experience a sense of oneness with it. And it's so beautiful, isn't it? And it's okay if that's where it starts. But here's the thing about love. It pulls. And so when you love somebody, when you love something, you will have a wonderful time at that, but sooner or later you will bump up against the limitations of that thing that you love. Do you know what I mean? You ever fall in love with something superficial and then be really embarrassed about the Facebook pictures? <laughs> Maybe too specific, but you know what I'm saying. When you love something, anything, sooner or later you will bump up against the limitations of that thing you love because love pulls and love demands and love wants us to grow. In unity, and you've heard this definition before, Charles Fillmore says that love in divine mind is the idea of universal unity. That's a lot, I'll say it again. Love in divine mind is the idea of universal unity. In other words, love is the concept that it's not just that you and me have a connection, but rather that together you and I are celebrating something bigger than us. That's the secret. You want your relationship to not have that boundary? Find something bigger than both of you that you can celebrate together. All of a sudden, it's not you and me in this relationship, friendship, marriage, partnership, whatever it is. It's you and me celebrating love with a capital L and we're not the source, we're a channel and things change. That's the secret. Find somebody, if you're interested in romantic stuff, find somebody that you can do that with. And if you can't, well, there's a sign. But it's not just that you and me and God are part of the same thing. Remember, it's universal unity. So in other words, if you're doing it right, if you're celebrating this love stuff right, if you're practicing this love stuff right, you realize that it's not just you and me. But rather, there is this one presence and power that goes through everything. There is just this one love that we are all celebrating, that when I really love, it reminds me that I'm supposed to love all the time. And that might seem like a big deal. But remember, this is something that every kid knows how to do. That kind of connection, that kind of love, that kind of celebration. You know what it feels like and you know that it feels so good when you, you make that breakthrough. When you find somebody you can celebrate with. Wow, I got loud there. You know when you love and it feels right because it's the truth. That is the truth about you. You and I are connection machines. We exist to make those connections, to break down those walls, to move forward and realize that we are all part of the same something. And it's so beautiful when it happens in positive ways and we find that connection. But you know what? It's going to happen one way or the other. Sometimes people do it in a very negative way. Remember when you were a little kid and you told your mom, dad, or a teacher or somebody, little so-and-so's picking on me and that grown-up said something like, well, it's because they have a crush on you. <laughs> Remember that? You've experienced that, whether it was happened to you or whether you were the person doing the picking on or whatever. You know what I'm talking about. And that wise and loving adult said, well, they just don't have the right tools yet. They'll grow into it. They don't know how to make a positive connection, so they're making a negative one. They just want to, you know, they want to connect with you. Well, the thing that you and I know now is that some people never grow out of that kindergarten level of connection. God bless their little hearts. It's nap time. But <laughs> I love that you clapped there. I wasn't ready for that. Um, <clears throat> but I think it does speak to something. You know, there are people in your life that you might feel irritated about. That's life. We're all here to grow. And sometimes it gets messy when the old stuff goes away and there's that moment, right? That's okay. And you can get angry with those people and you can hate those people for picking at you and not doing things the way you want. But man, that sounds a little like ego. And when a kid throws a tantrum, it's dumb to go throw a tantrum with them. 
right? Let's be the kind of people that can look at that situation and go, look, so-and-so, I have decided not to hate you anymore. <laughs> I know on some level that what you want is to be loved. I know that on some level, the, the math that's going on in your head, whether you're conscious of it or not, is I want to connect with this person. I can't connect positively because I don't feel so good about myself or ego or who knows. Doesn't matter. I know that you want to connect with me. And so you know what? What? Here I am. No boundaries. I got nothing to be afraid of. What? And I guarantee you something amazing will happen. And you're going to have to find different ways to say it. Different kinds of people require different things. You got that. But one way or another, if you can go to that irritating person and go, oh, wait a minute, they just want to connect with me. They just want love. They just want that. What do you want? What's up? What can I do for you? You will find that the adversary goes away. You might find that you just made a friend. Or you might find that you're allowed to leave now. And that's great too. Once you learn the lesson, you can decide that. But until you do, you're going to repeat that experience over and over again. So turn to that person and say, you want to connect? You know what? So do I. Let's figure this out. That's how this works. Let us decide how we connect with other people. Let us be the kind of people that find the highest and best connections that we can. Like I said, love demands that we pull. Love pulls us. Love wants us to have a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger idea about how, how all of this works. And the problem that people experience sometimes is a simple misunderstanding. You ready? This can solve so much, I promise. Five easy payments. No, just kidding. <laughs> this is the misunderstanding that sometimes people are chewing on. Inside each and every one of us, there is this unchanging indestructible, beautiful, permanent, forever, true with a capital T part of ourselves. That's that divine spark, that image and likeness, that did ye not know that ye are God's thing that's talked about in the Bible. There is this unchanging thing about each and every one of us. And we're hungry for it. We're born with a hunger to know about it and to express it and to share it and to see it. That's what we're hungry for. But sometimes people have that hunger for permanence and they look for it in physical things. They don't know about that idea that there's something beyond what you can see and touch and taste and so on. And that's when the frustration happens. It's okay to love something superficial about somebody. It's okay if you love so-and-so's laugh. It's okay if you're happy that you and, I like, you and them like to go to the same tractor poles, whatever. It's okay if that's what it is, but that can't be all there is. Or you are going to be frustrated. Everything about your physicality will change. That's beautiful. I keep telling my wife. I keep changing. You're going to have to deal with it. No, I won't do yoga. <laughs> Everything about your outer situation will change. And so if that's where your love is, you're going to be in trouble. But love demands more. And when we really love, we look for something deeper. When we really love, we keep wanting to learn and grow. Love is a power that moves, and that's good news. But not for everybody, because some people think that love is about holding still. You know what I mean? There are some people who treat love like it's a prize to be won, like it's a finish line, that once I get married, let's say, or whatever it is, I can stop. I'm cool, I got it, check. You know what I mean? There are those people who think that love is about holding still and they spend all of their time angry with that other person or with that situation or with that whatever it is because it changed. Life changes. Things in the outer change. Love is a power that moves. And so let us not be the kind of people who try to hold still. In fact, I know you know this already, but I'm going to say it again. Any frustration that you feel in your life whether it's your love life or anything else, any frustration that you feel is you trying to hold still and love trying to move you. That's where the friction comes from. That's where the frustration comes from. If it feels rough, think about that. Love's trying to grow you, so let it grow. But then again, there are a lot of people who are kind of hung up with the frustration. They think it's nice. You know what I mean? Sounds weird, doesn't it? But read any romance novel. You know, don't. I take it back. But you know what I mean. 
How many movies are based around the idea that it's so romantic that we have all of this suffering and all of this adversity? How many relationships are built on the idea of you and me against the world and it's so, it's so nice to have this exquisite torture? Oh, stop it. Some people get so hung up on the, the frustration. And yes, you know what? When you learn to love, sometimes it can be rough because you're unlearning old stuff. There's a chemical reaction that happens when you get some good ideas in the mix with some old bad ones and you've got to let that go. That's okay. But that process isn't where love lives. Love is not the struggle. Don't be excited about the struggle. You know what I mean? Because the truth is, the struggle is boring. I'm sorry, but you know somebody in your life that every time you see them, they got a problem. You know somebody in your life that they cannot talk about something good. I don't know why. They think that, that maybe they have to earn your smile by telling you all the things that they've been through. I don't know why, but don't you want to go to that person and go, I love you so much. Would you stop with the boring story? What good happened to you today? I know better about you because I know whose kid you are. Let's get to the good stuff. You deserve good stuff. I deserve to hear about good stuff. I'm sick of the broken record. Let's work on this. You know what I mean? Love is not the struggle. So here's the test. Think about your love. Once again, this can apply to relationships, but it can just as easily apply to the love that you want to express at work, a love in any kind of situation. Think about that love and ask yourself, does it make you feel bad? Does it make you feel sick, hurt, afraid, less than? Does it make you feel suffering? Stop it, William Shakespeare. Does it make you feel those things? Does it make you, here's the thing, does it make you feel separate, alone? Because rem remember, love is the power that joins. And so if it makes you feel separate, it ain't love. It's something else. It's ego, maybe. It's fear, maybe. I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. I'm interested in the love part. Let's get to the love part. Sometimes people say unconditional love, and what they mean is, how come you're not letting me keep poking you? <laughs> unconditional love. How come you're not allowed, allowing me to just sit on the couch and drink beer all day? Unconditional love. You go to unity. <laughs> no, man. No, man. Love is tough people stuff. The Bible says that love rejoices with the truth. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. If I love you, what it means is I am not going to let you be less than because I know whose kid you are. I love you so much that I'm going to say, look, here's me and all of my stuff. And you know what? I don't know everything. I got places that I'm growing. I'm working on it. And here's you and all of your stuff, and you don't know everything. You've got places that you're growing. You're working on it. Let's work on it together, and let's not ever hold still. That's unconditional love. That's how this works. When you love, you don't put up with. You empower. Love does not allow. Love demands. So go with that. Let yourself be pulled by it. I know you feel the pull. We all do. It's the gravity of the universe. Let yourself be pulled by it. There's something really beautiful because when you do, when you get out of the way, you discover that all of the, thought, the things that you thought you needed, like suffering, like ego stuff, like fear, that's not the truth about you. Fear separates, love unites. And the more you work on this, the more you realize that fear is an illusion. What do you got to be afraid of? Love is the truth. Love is the truth. So find ways to celebrate that. Find ways to reflect on that. If you want your miracle to work, the, the battery that charges that, the power that draws your good to you is love. And it, that love gets filtered through whatever you got going on. You know what I mean? So you take that drawing power that you have inside of you, that gravity that you have inside of you, if you filter that through fear, you're going to find more things to be afraid of. No fun. If you filter that through ego, you're going to find so many opportunities to realize that you don't know everything. I've done that one. I don't recommend it. But love just loves. So this is a matter of us deciding what we're made of. Like I said, love pulls us up and asks more of us. What are you made of? 
Are you defined by your possessions, by your situation, by the shifting sands of those things that will change about you? Of course not. You are more than biology, aren't you? Think about it. Love is more than just some, some, I don't know, hormones and stuff popping around. Love is more than something you can see with an electron microscope. You know that, in fact, think about it with me. If you were a machine, the things that make you who you are, the things that you love, the reason that you like your favorite song, if you were a machine, those things would be thought of as a glitch because they are not definable by biology. They are not definable by your mechanism. All of the things that are noblest in the human spirit, truth and beauty and love and wonderful things (laughs) can't be defined. So let's stop living like robots. We're not machines. We are made out of love. Ask yourself, what's okay for you? Do you want to live like a robot anymore? Do you want to be the kind of person who, who works a job they hate so that they can pay bills so that they can work a job they hate? Do you want to be the kind of person that, that, that has the television do all of their thinking and feeling for them? Do you want to be the kind of person that doesn't stand for something but rather votes because of what they're afraid of? Let us stand for something. Let us find something to be in love with, something to be excited about and go in that direction. How far are you willing to go? The power that pulls you right now is love. And that might seem like a lot to, to chew on but I want you to know it's easy. It's easy. It's easy because you already know how to do it. And it's easy because love is everywhere. If you're working on this stuff and you want to learn how to love better, imagine yourself putting on a little imaginary lab coat and get yourself an imaginary clipboard and become the kind of person that looks for examples of love everywhere they go. Check. Oh, check. Find it. It is everywhere. Become the kind of person who thinks about love. Become the kind of person who zeroes in on opportunities to find love everywhere you go. And you will discover that anything that isn't love is boring. And because love is that gravity inside of you, you will find more and more examples of it. Because love is that thing that makes you you. That thing that makes you happen. You will find you get more and more excited about it. And all of a sudden, you're not that person that people roll their eyes about when you show up at the party because you don't have a bad story to tell anymore. Be excited about love. Find examples of love. And then something amazing happens where the dog catches his tail and all of a sudden you are the example of love. All of a sudden it's not you talking about love. It's you talking love. It's not you thinking about love. It's you thinking love. The more you work on it, the more all of a sudden you will become the answer to the question, what does love look like? It'll be, here's what I just did. Love is the secret to making that work. And right now, whatever you're working on, whatever you're struggling with, I want you to know that you're not alone. We're all working on stuff together. But I want you to know, too, that whatever frustration you feel is love's gravitational power pulling you. They say falling in love. We say rising in love because if you let it, it will pull you up. And that feeling you feel of, I just want to hold on to something. I feel like I'm being pulled away. Love is saying, let's fly. And I'm here to tell you it's time to let go. It is time to set it free. Because after all, freedom is a choice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's pray together. Infinite Lord, wise and loving Mother, Father God, we give thanks for this way and this truth and this life. We give thanks for the love that we feel inside of us and radiates through us and blesses our world. In Jesus' name, amen. And now let us take our opportunity to give. The blessing is right there on the screen. We're going to take the gifts of love and substance in our hands and speak the word together. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Father, Mother, God. And so it is and so it does. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Everyone looks for their calling in. I always find it surprising The way people say that they're falling in love When I always felt I was rising Lo, 
floating right off of the ground and reaching something I only have dreamed of. I'm not falling at all. I am rising in love. Oh, everyone talks about tying the knot, but I have a hard time agreeing with the way that we find out the love that we've got when the feeling of love should be freeing lifting each other up instead of giving one another a shove we won't be falling at all we'll be rising in How do you let love grow? You've got to give it a chance when you found it. Bird in the hand will stay until you start to close your fingers around it. Love is the river whose waters we test in the measure of where we are going. But you never can step in the same river twice. For the water is constantly flowing And the deeper the river, the greater the trust The more that we're rising above We won't be falling at all We'll be rising in love I'm not falling at all I am rising I'm not falling at all I am rising I'm not Thank you, Mary. Thank you, everyone. We bless this offering of love and substance. We have given with our hearts. We receive as a family of spirit. Thank you, God. Multiply these gifts, and every hand and heart be blessed. Amen. We have a couple of announcements to share with you. We just want to let you know that CDs and DVDs of our service are in the bookstore within moments. And please mark your calendars for Tuesday evening, March 8th at 7. Come and find out what our youth ministry is learning, how you can be supportive of it. We promise not to sign you up, but we do want your support and your praise and for you to know what we're doing. We also want to invite those who feel so led to think about contributing a portable a crib are about $60 to $80 so that we can buy one for our nursery because it would just be terrific and I think they have them at Target. Okay. Tuesdays at noon our Wings Group studies Lessons in Truth by Dr. H. Emily Cady and this week prayer chaplain and youth coordinator prayer chaplain, I said that twice, Cynthia Mackey, it's a wonderful teacher. She's going to be there with wings at noon, and you're welcome to join in. Tuesday nights, Dieter and Jenny Randolph welcome you to join their class, Casting on the Other Side. I hear so much laughter and joy from that class. People are having a ball. It's at 7 o'clock in the cafe. Good discussion, great ideas. You're going to love it. Join in for a peaceful half hour prayer and meditation, 7 p.m. Wednesday evenings in the Peace Chapel. We call that a midweek faith lift. Faith lift, get it? <laughs> Beginner's Hebrew Torah classes by Rabbi Arthur Baseman at 7 in our cafe. We learn so much. Come challenge your brain cells, 7 o'clock Thursdays. We're thankful for Ray, Pat, John, Mary, Rick, and the Hammocks, and Robin Huckstra, who came in during the week, who helped us to get the church ready for Sunday morning and watch for our next service Saturday, March the 6th. Many hands make light work, and we get to be such good friends.
friends. Sign up at the info counter to get your weekly e-newsletter and don't miss out on anything coming up. All new and longtime Unity Church of Clearwater members are welcome to join our new member Meet and Greet and Eat. That's because pizza's involved, our favorite communion. It'll be after the service today, noon in the Peace Chapel. If you'd like to learn about joining the church, learn about some of the people who have come and we'll talk there. It'll be a really good time. Then we'll have some pizza in the cafe. Our next Sunday is our annual meeting. I know you've heard enough political stuff lately, probably, right? But this is really not political. It's a chance to learn what our church has done the last year, what our visions are for the year to come. It'll only take about half an hour, and we're going to get started right after the service next Sunday. We'd love for you to come, and our Youth of Unity is going to provide our child care in the youth wing. We'll review our church finances and we'll vision together it'll be fun and again we won't make you sign anything we just want you to be there with us and now let's welcome in our youth ministry some of them are already here come on up youth of unity let's sing them in this And now they invite you to rise with them as you're able, and let's share our prayer for protection. The world can use this time to rise in love in every way. Let's bless the world with our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Now let's join hands and sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. And let it begin with who? Peace. See you soon at Unity. <laughs>